In this video, we'll look at uh, the environments feature of PowerShell Universal. Environments allow you to set up different execution environments for your PowerShell scripts. So um, the best way to uh, look at that is kind of by example. So actually, if you go into PowerShell Universal and you click um, Settings, Environments, you can see that there are, there's some built-in environments when I first actually start up PowerShell Universal. So I didn't do any configuration, and these are all um, defined in here. So first of all, we locate any PowerShell 7 instances that you may have. So that's how this PowerShell 7.2.3 uh, environment was created. So since I don't have um, my own environments defined, it's going to automatically determine that that is there. Um, then, since I'm running on Windows, I have a Windows PowerShell environment defined here. So you can see that is just the one that comes built in with Windows, and you won't see that on um, a Linux or Mac, obviously. Uh, and finally, you will always have the integrated environment. So if you didn't have PowerShell 7 installed and you weren't running on Windows, this would be the only uh, environment that would be defined. And the integrated environment actually ins runs all the PowerShell scripts inside the PowerShell Universal server. So we actually have a uh, version of PowerShell, um, and you can see that version is listed right here is 7.1.5 that is running inside PowerShell Universal. Um, that has some performance benefits because we don't um, actually have to communicate with an external process. It also can be a little tricky because you're um, running all your PowerShell scripts in a single process and you know you might be contending for resources in a different way. So we're going to look at some of the um, configuration options for um, environments. I'll talk through those um, and then we can see how we can use environments for certain things. So. Um, First of all, uh, while we're on this page, you can see that we have a path to our PowerShell executable. If you did have a preview version of PowerShell 7 installed, you can click Create New Environment um, and actually define that uh, the path to that part PowerShell executable. Since PowerShell 7 can be installed side by side with other versions of PowerShell, um, you could potentially just have a zip file that you unzipped and execute that PowerShell version. So we'll just add a new one um, just to demonstrate that. I'll just call it pwsh.exe. So arguments are um, PowerShell.exe arguments, or PWSH.arguments. Um, and those would include things such as no profile. Um, you might see things like uh, execution policy settings in here if you're on Windows, um, and that kind of thing. So um, you can add additional arguments to the PowerShell um, uh, process that is started for jobs or APIs or whatever. Um, variables are the variables that you would like to bring in to your environment. So um, watch the variables section if you don't understand what variables are, but this allows you to indicate which variables should be um, pretty much uh, included in the execution environment. Um, you can use wildcards. By default, the wildcard character um, pretty much brings in all variables. So all secrets and all other variables will be available in the environment by default. But you can limit which variables are environments by using this setting. And you can put multiple values in here. You can see that I have a Haley and a New York variable. I could just select individual variables or I could do some sort of wildcard. The modules um, view here allows you to import any modules automatically. So um, with module autoloading, this isn't super important, but if you had a path to a module or something like that that wasn't on the PS module path, you definitely can include that here. Um, startup scripts are any scripts you want to run um, when the environment is starting up. So this could do things like log into Azure or um, connect to some other system that you want to do once. Um, do note that we use uh, run space pooling, so this script could be called multiple times. Whenever we open a new run space, it's going to call this startup script. Um, so if you are configuring that run space, you uh, just need to be aware that that is being called multiple times. Uh, the persistent run space um, setting uh, prevents run spaces from being reset after being executed. So lots of our features, um, especially with APIs and dashboards, will reset a run space after it's used. Um, that just puts it back into a clean state. It removes any variables that were defined or modules that were imported or functions that were defined. And um, it is useful for some people's environments where they want to maintain state in their run spaces. Again, note that there are multiple run spaces. So if you're setting variables in one, sp one space but not another, you may run into problems. Uh, this is also good for some modules that um, kind of require this persistent run space um, setting. Um, we found certain things like PowerCLI um, benefit from having this on. 
High performance runs uh, run space pools uh, actually use the built-in Microsoft um, run space pool. Uh, it's faster by about 30% of our run space pooling technology, but um, you can't use persistence or um, run space recycling, which I will talk about in a sec. Um, the maximum number of run spaces uh, is it defaults to 25, and you can adjust that. Uh, the more run spaces you have, the faster things will process, but the more memory will be used. So if you have a lot of memory on your system and you want it to be as fast as possible, you may increase the um, number of run spaces, but do note that you will see um, a memory increase with um, that run space pool size. Um, and then enabling the debugger allows you to use the debugging tools inside um, PowerShell Universal. We have another uh, lecture that kind of goes over our debugging tools, so definitely check that out. But you do need to enable them because uh, there's a slight performance um, hit um, when you have them enabled. So uh, that's why we kind of provide the option. So let's go ahead and actually create this. And I just want to show kind of what that does. So now we have a new environment, PS72. Um, and we can actually use that um, uh, pretty much across the platform. So um, where it's um, most easily obvious here is like when you're running a script and if you click invoke script, you actually have a drop down that allows you to select the environment um, that you want to run the script in. I can select one of my um, four environments or I can use the default environment and I'll show you where that's defined now. So if I go to settings general, you'll see that we have this environments tab here. And these define the default environments for um, different features within Universal. And by default, everything is set to integrated, which means everything runs inside the PowerShell Universal um, server itself. So it doesn't require PowerShell to be installed. Um, the default environment is what we saw um, when we selected the dropdown for that script. And if I were to select default, um, it will use the integrated environment. But if I wanted to default to something else, like Windows PowerShell, um, when you click Run, it will um, use that as the default instead. The other options here, API environment and security environment, uh, define uh, which environment to use for those features. So um, the API environment controls where your endpoints are run. So this particular weather API um, is currently being run in the integrated environment, which means it's inside the PowerShell Universal server. But because of um, you know, certain environment requirements, you may want to set that to Windows PowerShell or Windows um, or PowerShell 7.2. So that adjusts what you know, your endpoints run in. The security environment is actually used for um, doing forms-based authentication as well as the role-based access scripts. So by default, that runs inside PowerShell Universal Server. Um, I have seen a lot of people using the Active Directory module here, and you just need to be aware that if you don't have the latest Active Directory module installed, um, you are going to run into some performance problems unless you select Windows PowerShell. So um, just note that there. And the security environment is actually controlling um, your forms-based authentication scripts, which are found in authentication uh, with the type form. And that's the script that actually, by default, handles uh, how the user logs in, as well as the role scripts. So you can see here are my five uh, built-in roles. And if I actually go over to the role script, this particular script is running in that security environment. So like I said, if you're using the Active Directory module, just be aware that um, you may want to either switch to Windows PowerShell or update your um, Active Directory module um, to the latest one that works in PowerShell 7. All right, um, so now that we've uh, configured an environment, um, the other place that you can see this change has been done is inside the configurations page here. So you go settings, configurations, and environments, and this is the configuration file that controls our environments. And you can see we have our four environments, new PSU environment is being called with each one of our four names and versions and um, kind of the path and the arguments. Um, you can also configure settings inside here um, directly instead of using the UI. So I can set things like arguments, um, you know, max run spaces, modules to load, um, run space recycling, that kind of thing. 
So a word on run space recycling, what that actually does is after run spaces are used for a while, um, we actually dispose of the run space to clean up any additional resources. So by default, it's about five minutes, and if it's used a couple hundred times, it'll actually start to clean up those run spaces to um, kind of free up memory and that kind of thing. So you can turn that on here, but it's kind of an advanced setting that we will talk about um, in a later lecture. Um, the other place that you can configure an environment, well, the other two places you can configure environments are in dashboards. So when you create a new dashboard, it's gonna allow you to select an environment. So here I can select 7.2, the default environment, or Windows PowerShell. Um, and finally, um, you can set environments for triggers. So um, you can see here that I can set my or terminals, I can set my um, environment for my terminal, and that would actually spin up that PowerShell process as a terminal that you can then execute commands in um, inside um, PowerShell, uh, the, the built-in PowerShell brow the browser terminal. Um, one word on scripts is that you can assign um, a environment to your script. So for example, if I um, set this as Windows PowerShell, um, you can see the environment changes to Windows PowerShell. And if I click Invoke Script now, you see I don't have the option to actually select the environment anymore. That's because the uh, environment was defined on the script itself rather than um, uh, in this Run dialog to provide the option to select it. So if you are an administrator and you have developed scripts that only work in a certain environment, this is one way to kind of limit the inputs that the user has and limit the uh, mistakes that they may make um, for um, that script. And much like the, uh, the environments configuration file, you can actually go to your scripts configuration file and you'll see that's where the environment is set. So pretty much any, um, any uh, like entity that you configure in here that supports setting an environment will have this environment um, parameter on it and you just specify the name of the environment and we'll use that environment um, when executing the scripts. So in this video, we went over um, what are environments, how to configure environments, and kind of where to set environments inside your PowerShell Universal instance.